That's not three days and three nights. Come on. Hallelujah. Somebody said, don't matter. Oh, yes, it does. Unless you're going to discard what Jesus said. Amen. Right. That's a Catholic thing. Catholic thing. They came up with Good Friday. Yeah. Look back in your church history. You'll find out that the Catholics came up with Good Friday. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. Got it wrong one more time. Got it wrong one more time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No way. That, that man don't add up. Hallelujah. Go with me this morning, if you will, to the book of Luke, the 22nd chapter. Hallelujah. What a blessed week this past week has been. My, my, my. I went over to pick up the newsletters and uh, had an opportunity to go by the hospital and visit with Sister Martine and pray with her and visit with Brad and pray with him. Hallelujah. And believe in the Lord to work mightily on both of them. <clears throat> Hallelujah. With Brad's doing better and I'm believing Sister Martine's going to as well. Amen. Hallelujah. But heard from a few listeners this week and got some good feedback and always glad to hear from our listeners, amen, and people viewing the the uh, sermons and uh, listening to our radio station. Got a call this morning about 6.15 from a listener in West Virginia that uh, listens to our all music program, but they wanted the newsletter. Well, see what I told you last week about the uh, music program opens the door, allows you to get your foot in the door in other ways, amen? So they, uh, they talked about how encouraging the music program was and they really, really wanted the trumpet. So that's good. We'll send that out to them. Luke the second chapter, I mean the 22nd chapter, I'm sorry. The 31st verse, Luke 22 and 31. The Bible says, and this is Jesus talking to Peter, He turns to Simon Peter and He says, Simon, Simon, Behold, and oh, that'd be a good place to stop and think, uh oh, he's getting ready to tell. See, the disciples will always want to know who's going to be first, who's going to be second, who's going to sit on your right hand, who's going to sit on your left hand, right. who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom of God. Amen. Jesus turns to Simon and he says, Simon, Simon, behold. Yeah. And you know, at that point, he don't know what Jesus is fixing to say. Maybe he thinks he's finally going to give me the credit I deserve. Come on. <laughs> he turns to him and says, Behold. Satan hath desired to have you. All right. Amen? Come on. To have you. You see, it's not enough for the enemy to pick at you. He wants to control you. He wants to have you. Amen? Right. That means that he wanted to possess him. Amen? That means, if you look at it in the Greek, it means to call or demand for trial. All right. So he was demanding to test Peter. Yeah. to have Him. And Jesus doesn't stop where He says that He may sift. Why? Amen? That He may sift you as wheat. Yeah. Now we know the sifting process is one that they did to separate the garbage and the chaff from the real wheat. They would take it, toss it up in the air, and yeah. shake the screen wire looking thing underneath it, and the good stuff would go on through, and uh -huh. then it would catch the bad stuff on top. Amen. Uh -huh. which, is exactly, which is exactly what this trial would do for Peter, but it doesn't sound very pleasant whenever you're talking about it. Amen. Uh -huh. The devil wanted to scatter him. He wanted to riddle him. He wanted to shake him. Yeah. But in this shaking, in this riddling, in this scattering, in this sifting, the good would be separated from the bad. Amen? Amen? Just like it's gold when it's put into a furnace to be tried. Amen? Right. And it gets out the dross and the things that are not pure. And right. it brings forth that which is pure gold. Amen? Right. That's exactly what this trial would do for Peter that he was right. getting ready to go into. So it wasn't a terrible, it wasn't a pleasant thing to think about right. that he was getting ready to be tried, uh -huh. that Satan desired to have him, that Satan desired to sift him. But see, everything that the enemy means for bad, God means for good. Amen? Uh -huh. Any trial you ever go through is not to destroy you, but to make you stronger. Amen? That's right. Whenever you're working on a, a, a pressing bench and you're, you're pressing uh, uh, weights and you're lifting weights and you're working your muscles, you're not doing that. 
to destroy your muscles, even though it hurts, even though it's a workout, even though there's pain involved. It's to make your muscles stronger than they were when you started pressing. Amen? Peter was going to be stronger when he came through this sifting process than he was before it started. But I'm sure whatever... That ain't the thing you want Jesus to turn to you and say. Come on. Satan wants you. Right. He desires to sift you as wheat. Right. Now listen to this. Oh, but listen. Let me stop here for just a minute. The fact that he said sift you as wheat oh. means something. Amen. Do you remember Jesus liking believers and unbelievers as wheat and tares? Right. Here, he calls Peter wheat. Amen. Amen. Right. So at least Peter does have the comfort of knowing, hey, at least I am one of them. <laughs> at least I am the part of the wheat field. Right. Amen. I'm not a tear. Yeah. And Jesus doesn't stop her and says, but I have prayed for thee. And I know we've read this before. But listen to this morning. You might get something fresh out of it. But I have prayed for thee. And Peter might have thought, as you know, we might have. Mm -hmm. We like to pray for each other not to go through things. Right. And maybe that's what, where Peter's mind went. I don't know where his mind went, but maybe he thought, all right, Jesus has prayed that this not happen, but that ain't what Jesus said he prayed for. Come on. He said, I prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. Uh -huh. Amen? Come and on. when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Jesus didn't pray for him not to go through it. Yeah. Jesus knew that it was needful that Peter go through the valley. See <clears throat> Jesus knew that it was needful that Peter go through the trial. Yes, sir. You see, we got a whole church world that believes that anytime you're in a valley or going through a trial, you don't miss God. Come on. That God's will cannot be for you to go through things. I'm here to tell you today that it's not God's will that you live on the mountain. Uh, right. Amen. Right. It's not God's will for you to live on the mountain because just like the muscles we were talking about a while ago, you will become weak. Right. If you never have to exercise your faith, your faith becomes weak. Yeah. Faith is like a muscle. The more you have to use it, the stronger it gets. Yeah. The more you let it sit unused, the weaker it gets. Same way with the muscles in your body. If you never have any, if you never have any exercise, if you never have any activity, you begin to grow weaker. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Jesus tells him, "I pray for you." Yeah. See, it's not so important this morning that Brother David don't go through things. As a matter of fact, that's needful. Oh, wow. <laughs> That'll separate you from the crowd this morning, Amy. Amen. It's needful for you to go through things. All right. But the most important thing about you going through it is that your faith does not fail right. while you're going through it. Amen. Amen. And we all know what Peter went through. We all know that he denied the Lord. Right. We all know that what he did, and we've talked about it. Thank the Lord. My, my, my. Thank the Lord that when He came out, He came out stronger in the Lord than He was before it started. Amen? Right. If you look at Peter beforehand, I won't deny you. I won't deny you. I'll go with you all the way to death. And then you find him denying that he even knew the man because he was scared they might put him to death. And then you go on down the road some. You find him over in the book of Acts after the day of Pentecost standing up before all of Jerusalem. This same man that had denied it to the maiden had denied it to the people there around the fire there as Jesus was getting tried that he didn't know him. We find him over there on the day of Pentecost staggering out of the upper room saying this is that which was prophesied by the prophet Joel. Amen. In the last they said, God, I will pour out my spirit. And he preaches and he tells them about him crucifying Jesus and how that it was impossible for death to hold him. And thousands of souls were added to the church that day. Peter was a changed man. Yes, sir. Peter was not the same. Jesus said, you're going to go through this, but when you come out of it stronger than you were, you're going to be able to strengthen your brothers. All right. See, you can't strengthen other people if you've never been through something yourself. Amen. That's what Peter learned. Yes, Hallelujah. Sir. Not only that, my goodness, and certainly he wasn't perfect, and that he would uh, he would have some differences in, and even had to be rebuked on the uh, circumcision and the and the uh, the the uh, non circumcised, you know, because he was got caught up in that law thing that you have to be circumcised or, or you, you're not clean, you know. The Jews are are the ones, and the Greeks ain't, and Jesus yeah. would have to let down a net with some unclean animals and tell him to rise and eat. And Peter would say, no, not so. I've never ate an unclean thing. I don't eat unclean stuff. And, and the Lord would say, that which I have cleansed, call thou not unclean. Amen? Amen. Wow. Talking about the, the message that he had to yeah. preach, not just to the Jew, but to the Gentile as well. Right. That you don't have to 
be exactly the way the law says you have to be. If you do, we're all going to miss it. Amen? Nobody that I know lives the law to the T. Can't. That's why Jesus came. Amen? You can't. So he would preach and not perfect, but my goodness, he would raise the lame man there. Him and John would, would uh, heal him at the gate of uh, the temple as they went in. And they, the Bible records how that they would lay sick people out the side of the road so that Peter's shadow would be cast upon them in hopes that they would be healed. And some of them were. Amen. Yeah. So Peter went on to be a great man of God, but he had to go through things. Amen. In order for you to grow, you have to go through trials. In order for your faith to be stronger, it has to be worked. Come on. It is not God's will that you live on the mountain. I know we like to sing, I'm living up on the mountain and I'm alright. Yeah. I'm living up on the mountain and I'm alright. Amen. On. I don't have to worry. I don't have to get uptight because I'm living up on the mountain and I'm alright. Alright. Ain't God's will for you to live on the mountain. Come on. There are trials. There are valleys. Right. There are things that you will go through in this life. Amen. And if you will allow them to, God will take those things and use them to make you stronger Amen. This man, at the end, according to history, this is not recorded in the Bible, but according to Bible history, whenever he got ready to be put to death for the cause of Christ, didn't go kicking and screaming, but was more than willing. This man that denied Jesus by their pilot's hall was more than willing to lay down his life for Jesus. Even so much so, Brother David, that according to history, he said, don't crucify me like you did Him. Crucify me upside down. I'm not worthy to be crucified the same way as Jesus was. Right. Oh, you talk about a difference. Mm. Trials will change you. Amen. Valleys will change you. Right. If you go through those and you hold on to your faith, then your faith becomes stronger. Yes, sir. Amen. Jesus didn't pray for Peter not to go through this thing. I could pray that for you today. I could come down here and I could pray, Lord, please, don't let Brother Sleece ever go through nothing. And my prayer would be in vain because Sleece going to go through some things. Right. Every one of us. There ain't a one of us. One of you out there in the sound of my voice. There ain't a one of us that don't go through things. Right. That aren't facing things. I, just this past week, I can name a dozen people that I ran into, that I talked to, that I got emails from, or that I went and seen that are going through things. Right. They're facing things. And to pray for them never have to face another battle would not be a just and fair prayer. Right. Because it's not God's will that you never go through a trial. It's His will that that trial makes you better and makes you stronger and tries your faith. And your faith becomes greater than it was whenever you went in. Right. I know many times we are told that if we're going through something, and this is the mindset of the church, the biggest part of the popular church, that if you're going through something, we must have missed God's will somewhere along the line. Amen? Somewhere or another, you must not be in God's will. James would say in James the first chapter, you don't have to go there, but I'm going to read it to you, the second and third verse. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Now that means adversity, it means trial, it means experience. He says count it all joy when you experience these things. Why? Why? Verse 3 says, Knowing this, Brother David, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Come on. Job said, But he knoweth the way I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. All right. See, the Bible likens our trials and our valleys yeah. to the trying of gold. Amen. I remember the story someone said, someone wrote that there was a silversmith and he was putting the silver into the fire yeah. to get all of the impurities out of it. And someone